So action is folded to the dealer position who open raises. We re-raise him from the small blind position with ace jack suited, ace jack of hearts. The dealer calls and look at this flop. Wow. We have a combo draw. We hit a king, queen, six, two hearts, meaning that we have a nut flush draw. We have a gut shot to the straight with uh, any 10 coming. So now we have a strong drawing hand, actually a very strong drawing hand, a combo draw. We have so many outs. We have nine hearts, uh, three tens, because one of the, four, the, ten, the fourth 10 is a heart. So together we have 12 outs. If our ace is good, then even better. So when I see this flop and I see so much money already in the pot, what goes in my mind is I'm pot committed. I have nowhere to go. This hand should go all in. Uh, and the best place to go all in is on the flop where my equity is the highest. So we have uh, several lines here we can take. Our standard line versus loose passive opponents that call or check too much would be to bet our hand as a semi bluff. If he calls, we bet it again on the turn and probably go all in on the river. If we have information that our opponent is an aggressive opponent, either he bluffs too much or he bets too much with medium hands, then we can have uh, an exploitive line to exploit his leaks. We can check to him on the flop, expecting him to bet this uh, scary flop and then we can check raise him and go all in on the turn if he calls. So these are our two possible lines. Normally when playing low stakes the players we will be facing will be loose players pre flop playing too many hands and they will be passive players meaning that uh, most of the players will check behind their draws their flush draw their straight draws hoping to get a free card and hit a miracle uh, straight or flush. So we should bet this flop. Uh, Preflop, when the dealer called, he told us that he has a medium weak hand, meaning that he doesn't have the best possible hands on this flop. He doesn't have a set of kings because he probably re-raises with uh, pocket kings preflop. Same goes for pocket queens preflop. He doesn't have set of queens here on this flop. Probably doesn't have aces or kings in his hand. So we expect that our bet on the flop will make him fold many hands. And if he calls, no problem. We bet again on the turn, uh, expecting him to fold this time a queen. And if he calls, we go all in on the river, maybe even expecting him to fold a weak king. So let's go. Let's bluff this hand. We bet the deal raises us. Let's see what the fighter has to say about our bet. You are out of position and the flop is wet. We have a strong drawing hand. Our value is based on the strong nut flush draw, the gut shot straight draw and the ace of overcard. We should bet to make the opponent fold stronger hands. Hands like uh, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket sevens, maybe a six, etc. Uh, we still have great chances to improve if he calls and we want to maximize our profit when we will hit our outs because we will hit them. But he raises us um, versus most players. The optimal line here would be to go all in. Even if he calls, we have a lot of equity. If we have information that the player is super passive, meaning that he raises this flop with two pairs and above, hands like king queen or set of sixes, then we have a lot of information on this opponent. And in this situation, I would just call out of position his raise because I get enough pot odds plus implied pot odds to improve into a winning hand over his two pair or set and take the rest of the money he got left. But usually my line here would be to go all in. I have decent equity and still some chances that the opponent folds after his raise. So let's go all in. Let's see why all in. 
we still can uh, fold stronger hands, the pot is big, we still have great chances to improve, and when we go all in and we hit, boom, all the pot goes to Papa.